Hey guys, Dean of DVD for an unboxing. Who the hell knew I'd have one of those lately? Uh, this one is for a, a box set. It is a um, Blu-ray slash CD set. I have already opened it. I, I filmed it before and something happened. It glitched up. So I'm not going to put it back in the box and go through all that crap again. I've also added something to it that I need to add to it. And you'll see that when I go through it. But let me, without further ado, let me show you what it is. And that is the Grateful Dead Fare Thee Well anniversary, uh, 50th anniversary concert from Chicago. And I say concert, it's concerts. It's the 3rd, 4th, and 5th of July, um, 2015, which celebrated for, from 1965 to 2015, 50 years of the Grateful Dead. So you get all three of the of the July 3rd, 4th, and 5th sets from uh, Soldier Field in Chicago. And it's got a beautiful spine. Here's if you put it on your shelf this way. You've got the Fare Thee Well with the uh, what's typically the uh, one of the Grateful Dead symbols. And you've got a number. It's a numbered. So there were 20,000 of these made, and this is 12,941 out of 20,000. It's around the middle. I don't think it really matters much, but to some people it does. I imagine if he had number one, it'd be pretty cool. And I imagine if he had number 20,000, it'd be pretty cool. And maybe if he had 10,000 or five, you know, something that was even numbered, it might mean something to you. But uh, I think this is a fine number. <laughs> Sounds like a legit number. Uh, and that is uh, right under the nice material here. And then this end is uh, covered with, um, basically, not covered with, but has a beautiful, uh, I don't know what color this is, fuchsia, magenta, I don't know what the hell it is, um, roses, roses pattern on this, which is another another symbol of the Grateful Dead, I guess, the, the roses, skull and roses, there's all roses across here. Um, so let's get to this. There's two things in it. One is a booklet, which I'll show you, pretty thick. I don't think this thing's ever been hardly looked at, maybe once, because this is, yeah, the whole set, as I'm, I, I looked through it, like I said earlier when I unboxed it. But So these were the tickets. If you pre-ordered one of the shows, and I don't know which one is which, let's just say 3rd, 4th, and 5th, because I don't know. You got one of these in the mail, and this was your ticket in, and you got to keep it as a souvenir, which is pretty cool, I think. Um, and then it was a backstage pass, I assume, because it would be worn as a, uh, as a lanyard over your neck. You have that on it. Pretty cool. And then this, here's Soldier Field before things began. I'm going to guess this is on the third. And let's see. Yeah, this is just uh, for a bunch of pictures. A lot, a lot of the people here, there's some different introductions for different people. There's a couple of different pieces of writing in here. And lots of pictures. You know, kind of the rehearsal type time. This just covers the shows in Chicago the 3rd, 4th, and 5th. So they did five shows, three in Chicago, two in Santa Clara, California. This box set just covers the Chicago shows, period. Nice introduction. Called My Love is Real from Bill Walton. Uh, huge fan and former NBA star. 6'9", or something like it. Um, so I'll read that. I haven't read any of this stuff yet, so that's good. And this kind of goes with, this whole thing kind of goes with something else that I picked up on. Well, I'm just going to go with two things, and you'll see why in a minute. But one of them going to go with a Blu-ray that I bought uh, off of eBay for like 15 bucks, which is just the Chicago, the last the last show. Uh, that's all they were selling it. Uh, the only, this was the only one they were selling on, on uh, Amazon. But it's got the two Blu-rays from the July 5th show. will become important momentarily. Uh, and then secondly... Uh, is important as well. Celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Grateful Dead is this book fairly well. This covers uh, all five shows in picture form. So it has a set list for the Santa Clara shows. It has um, all that, pretty much. Um, shows the band. So you've got four original members of the band. Uh, when I say original, long term, I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think uh, Mickey Hart was one of the first members. I think he joined a little bit later. They start out as the Warlocks. It was Bob Weir. Let me be a little illustrator here. 
fight me. Whoa, don't fall. It was Bob Weir, not here, Phil Lesh, Bill Kreutzman, and Rod McKernan. Uh, Rod McKernan, who's not in the picture because he's dead. Um, but Mickey Hart joined later. Uh, Ron McKernan, known as Pigpen, uh, bluesy organist, harmonica player, and lead singer for the most part, uh, did a lot of the numbers anyway, along with Jerry Garcia and Bob Weir. Uh, but Pigpen was the show. And he, people came to see Pigpen. He was the he was the, uh, and they became the Grateful Dead at some point early on. Uh, Ron McKernan died. Pigpen died early on of a drug uh, overdose, I believe. Um, then he was replaced by, um, I believe Tom, Tom Constantin, uh, and then he left the band and I don't know why, I read up on my Grateful Dead history, and, uh, Keith Godchow, who's kind of a classical, classically trained pianist, joined the Grateful Dead, and he was kind of a classy sound, um, along with his wife, Donna Jean Godchow, who was a background singer for Elvis Presley. Though I never really care for her vocals with the Grateful Dead. On very few things could I could I take her vocals. Um, and you just have to listen to some of the older stuff and see what I'm talking about. But uh, And so they had terrible luck with keyboardists. He left the band. I think he's dead. She's still alive. Then Brett Midland joined as keyboardist. Great keyboardist. Had a real bluesy feel to the keyboards and piano. Uh, he did mostly keyboards, organ type stuff. Really good though. Uh, and his voice was really bluesy. Went, really complimented Jerry as well. Um, and Bob, for that matter. Anyway, he died of a drug overdose. And then they got Vince Welnick, who was with the band up until Jerry's death in 1995. Um, and Vince, unfortunately and sadly, committed suicide in 2008, I believe. Um, slit his throat. Or, yeah, slit his throat, I believe. In front of his wife, sadly, uh, and died. He was, he was going through a lot of depression. He was a former keyboardist for the Tubes, if you know of that band. And he just couldn't take the fact that he wasn't with the Grateful Dead anymore. Uh, and neither of the, the two offshoots of the Grateful Dead, the, the Dead and the other ones, and you know, they, were, they were kind of together for a while and they broke up. And, and, um, and then um, he just couldn't take it. He committed suicide. So... Um, the keyboardist here is Bruce Hornsby, who had been with the band a few different times, kind of filling in, kind of filled in when, when Vince Welding first joined to kind of help him kind of get used to the Grateful Dead tunes, and especially the jamming sections, which are very much improvisational, so you kind of have to get with the flow. He helped him go through that. So he's with the band, um, as is uh, Trey Anastasio from Fish. And there's somebody else with the band whose name I never can remember. I really should have this down better than I do. Uh, yeah, Jeff... Cimenti. I'm not really sure where he comes from, to be honest. Uh, but they're joining. They're also joining the band here for the for the last uh, go round. Uh, those three. So the original four members were pretty close, and then these other three um, to round it out. And uh, here they all are on the cover here. All right, back to the box set now. So um, this sells for $189 if you were able to get it. Uh, and I think uh, Dead.net may still have a handful of these things left. I don't know. I don't know if they're the original ones. I don't know if these are limited edition. I don't know if it's the same thing or if it's something else. Uh, but these were limited to 20000 And this is, like I said, one of them. So let's take a look at the actual CDs and Blu-rays. So they come in this kind of a package. You've probably seen this kind of packaging before on various movies and such. Kind of standard stuff. These hold up pretty well, I think. Um, so I'll give you the story. So it was $189. I, I got it for $20 plus $10 shipping, so $30. Um, amazing price. And I think the reason I was able to do it was because he's he was missing one Blu-ray out of the set. Just one Blu-ray. And I have, so I got a question for everybody um, that I'm going to ask when it gets to the point of what, what, I, what I had to do. So I told you I bought this. So it happened that the, the one Blu-ray he was missing was the first set of this show. So I already had it. I already paid $15 and had this. So I said, oh, good. Um, so here's what it looks like. It's a beautiful set. We've got the, uh, 
as a stage from way back, way back where. Uh, here's the three nights. Interestingly enough, not one song was repeated on any of these three nights. We got 50 years worth of recording. You can do that. And the two nights in Santa Clara, between the five nights, only two songs were repeated. In five shows. That's something. They were able to go from the start of their career, and they did that more, more in the uh, the first Santa Clara show that they did. Um, they they focus in on very early songs that they did, like Dark Star, um, St. Stephen, songs like that, New Potato Caboose. Um, and here, more of the, well, some of the older ones, for sure, no doubt, as well as some, like, trucking and stuff, um, and then some newer ones as well, up until the, the last song that Jerry wrote is on here. So, tribute to Jerry, yes. 50 years anniversary, yes. Last time the four original members will probably appear on stage, probably. Um, so here's the first CD. What happens is you got, for each one of these different nights, you're going to have three CDs and a fourth, um, they did a um, an intermission show. And so that is also here on a fourth CD if you want to listen to that. So here you go. There's one, two, three, the fourth. And then this would be the Blu-ray. If I zoom in close enough, I think you can see Blu-ray number one. Blu-ray number one of the July 3rd show. Beautiful. Beautiful artwork there. Or photographs, I should say. So here you've got, this is uh, the, four, the July 4th show. 4th of July, CD1, CD2, CD3, CD4, which is, of course, the... Um, can I read that right? That's CD3. This is CD4. Uh, which would be, and then here's the first Blu-ray, second Blu-ray, and then we move on to the July 4th show. So, um, you'll see everything pretty much looks the same, right? I mean, everything has got the same kind of look to it. You've got a black disc, I'll just take out the July 5th one here. You've got a black disc, and on the bottom you've got, you know, what's on it, basically. Um, yeah, and you can see it's even, it's even got a little mark here. Just, these, these are pretty tightly in there, which... You know, it's good and bad. Um, so, you, so it is going to wear a little bit. I don't know if they all wore a little bit. No, this one did not. So when you come to, when you come to the, um, I'll show you some of the artwork here too. Some of the photographs that should say that artwork. Beautiful photographs. So, so you come to this one and there would have been a hole here, right here. Because he's missing this one. But thankfully, I have this. So I, it should be this. Exact, I haven't checked it yet, but it should be the exact same thing. How am I going to check it? I have the second Blu-ray on here too, which should match up exactly with this Blu-ray. Now here's the question. So I replaced this one. Should I go ahead and take the other one out, one that looks just like it, and stick that in the um, the spot where this is, or just leave it like it is? I don't really know. I mean, I kind of thought about it both ways. Uh, and I don't really know which one to do. So that's my question. And then I probably would sell this, which is missing the CD1, and sell it for, you know, a pretty cheap amount. It's going for quite a lot when it's complete now. I got it for $15 off eBay a year ago, and now I think it's going for at least twice that, maybe three or four times that. So let me have some water. My mouth is parched. <sighs> okay. That's the set, $20 for 12 CDs, six Blu-rays, and one I one I had to put in my in, in myself. Um, I have watched this and it looks great. I have